Have you ever hosted a Zoom meeting and had an attendee who got a little out of hand and you wished you could remove them? Well, I'm going to walk you through how to do that here in Zoom meeting and give you a couple reasons of why this might be handy to know. Before we get into it, I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer. I do want to remind you to like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell so you get notified every single Monday when I drop new videos. I love to talk about event production, event planning, lots of videos about Zoom, hybrid events, and more. So I highly encourage you to subscribe. And if you like more free content, I'm the co-host of the Better Events podcast with fellow event pro Mary Davidson. We drop new episodes every single Wednesday, and the podcast is all meant to help you learn how to create, host, and attend better events. Those episodes are about 30 minutes long, so they tend to be a little bit more in-depth than some of my videos here. So if you've been wanting more, I highly encourage you to listen wherever you listen to podcasts. All right, so we're talking about how to remove or block somebody in Zoom. Now, We've all heard the horror stories about Zoom bombers at this point. I feel like back in 2020, when we were all going virtual, this was very common because there were a lot of people on the internet who were bored and had a lot of time on their hands and were probably kind of techie, and they would take advantage of folks who didn't fully understand some of the controls inside Zoom. As an event producer, I have definitely seen this to be less frequent and less needed, but it is always helpful to know, again, you know I love backup plans, how to remove someone from your Zoom meeting, whether it's just a casual meeting or a larger workshop or a conference, it is really, really helpful. And I'll give you a bonus tip at the end that's related to this. So here we are in Zoom. (laughs) You might be, I'm already giggling at myself because I set this up for this video. And so you're gonna see two iterations of me. One is from my iPhone, one is from my desktop, and this third one, I'm utilizing my tablet to be in here, but I named myself Logan Troll. Why did I say troll? Because on the internet, we have trolls. Now the person who will have the permissions to be able to remove somebody are hosts and co-hosts. And so what you'll see here is as if I have two options of where I can remove somebody. I am operating on my desktop, so I am the host of this meeting. So one option to remove Logan the troll would be to hover over the three dots, a little pop-up, and then here I've got remove. That's one option. I can remove her from the meeting. The other option is if you click on the participants list, it'll pop up. I already have it popped out here. Then you scroll over to the Logan troll name, so the name of your participant you'd like to remove. You're gonna click more and that drop is gonna come up and then you're gonna have remove. Now, before I hit remove to show you what it looks like, I do wanna do a little bonus tip here. I often, if you don't wanna be as aggressive as removing someone, an option here is to put someone in the waiting room. This will just pop them back out into your waiting room. You'll see them as a pop-up then that Logan Troll is in the waiting room. I've done this more if not so much that someone has been acting out and I want to get them out of my meeting, but more maybe we're on a break or something where they're supposed to have logged off and then rejoin again. And that person doesn't, hasn't maybe walked away from their camera, especially here where we can't see their video on. I don't know if someone's sitting there, but they might've just walked away from their computer. So I'll often just put them in the waiting room until we're ready for them again. But for this purposes, let's hit remove. And you'll see a little pop up here that says, once removed, Logan the troll will not be able to rejoin the meeting. Now, this is big because once you've removed someone, and I will say, small tidbit, I accidentally did this because my uh, in the early days of Zoom, my grandmother, we were on a family call and she froze. And so I was like, oh, I'll just remove her. Well, we had to create a whole new link because once I removed this person, removed her, she was unable to rejoin the call. So that's why I say use this sparingly for true folks that you want to kick out. You're also able to report to Zoom. This is to help Zoom know maybe if this account has gotten reported a bunch of times. I'm going to unclick this because I don't want my tablet to be on the Zoom list, but I'm going to click remove. And now, boom, my troll has been removed. And on my account, it just pops up for my tablet. It says the host has removed you from this meeting. So the troll or person that you're kicking out of your meeting will get a notification that you kicked them out. But now they're out of your meeting, no harm done, no foul. So with that bonus tip that I had in there, just once again, the waiting room is a great tool if you are the event host or co-host here on Zoom and you wanna remove someone from a situation, but maybe you don't wanna fully block them from that link, I would highly encourage you to first put them in the waiting room. Then you could always let them back in and then remove them, or you can just let them sit in the waiting room the entire time. That's fine too. That's a little bit more of a passive um, move, but I would encourage you to talk through this with whoever your event client is, or if you're the host of the meeting and it's your event, think through when you would want to use that remove feature because you don't need to use it. I honestly have not had to use it very much in the, or if anything, 
I haven't really had to use this at all in the last two years. We've had pretty strict Zoom concerns, but I would say be very prepared to use that, especially if you have a public event on Zoom and especially if you've been sending your Zoom link publicly places. Almost 100% of my clients that I work with, we do not do this. They're all private events where we either know who's coming or it's a link that's just sent to a very specific invitee list, which then reduces the chances of getting a Zoom bomber or a troll in your meeting. But it's very helpful to have, and I often encourage you to think through this so that during the situation, during your event, you're not having to rethink through, oh, should I remove this person or not? You've already had that discussion with yourself or with the player, the players at B, and you guys are all on the same page of when to remove someone. Well, I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer. This is another installment of my favorite tips and tricks when it comes to event planning and running your own business. I drop new videos every single Monday, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.